Welcome, welcome back. I'm so excited. Uh, I've got a brilliant uh, basketball mind, uh, character builder, um, leader, uh, you know, just a champion, uh, seven-time champion, uh, women's basketball coach at the high school level and athletic director and in really building young people in the area of uh, the PA, Pennsylvania. And so I have uh, Ron, Coach Ron, my people with us today, and I'm so excited to have you here and uh, so excited to get to share and you indulge in his story. I'm going to tell you a little bit. We met uh, on social media, um, uh, on LinkedIn, and he reached out, and we've been talking and did some research uh, on him. And he, I asked, he asked me to send him my book, and I sent my book, and we started conversating from there. And uh, I was like, man, this is a championship coach. I want to know more about who he is and how he's done it. Um, in so many years at this level. And I definitely want to say thank you for being on, on here today. And coach, uh, so excited to hear your story. Where did this all start? You know, uh, from birth, gone to kind of tell us where you come from, kind of give us a spill of who you are and where, where all this magic started uh, from. All right, well, first of all, thanks coach for having me on. You know, I really appreciate it. Um, no, first, you know, I was born in Detroit, Michigan, you know, um, then I moved very young to, you know, me and my mom and sister removed to Kansas, first moved to California for a year, then from California to Kansas. Um, then we lived from Kansas, you know, um, from high school, then I went to community college in Kansas, then in 2001, um, I moved to Pittsburgh, PA, and I've been here ever since. Now, what, what junior college did you go to? I'm a junior college guy. What junior college did you go to in Kansas? Oh, Cali County. Cali County, okay. The Jayhawks. Yes, yes, sir. Jayhawks. Did you East. play ball there? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Yeah. But where would you end up going after junior college? Uh, uh, Robert Morris University. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, they, had a, they had a great sports management program, you know, at the time. Um, they had one of the best in the nation, and theirs was based off of business instead mm -hmm. of food physical education, and I wanted to go more in the business aspect of it, so um, that's why I went to um, Robert Morris. Gotcha. So when you, you leave Robert Morris, how was your experience at Robert Morris? It was great, you know. Um, you know, I walked on on the basketball team, you know, so I had a great experience there. Um, classes was great. Um, you know, pledge cap Alpha Psi. Okay. Uh, you know, had an overall great experience on the court, off the court, you know, just had overall great, you know, experience there. Uh, professors were great within a sports management, you know, department. So, you know, I had a great time, Robert Morris. Good, good. So with that, what mindset did you have coming in uh, as a, and, and I say this a little bit uh, because you, you hear a lot of people don't give credit to junior college Mm -hmm. um, don't give credit to even walking on and, 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 and fighting for that. What did those environments give to you and prepare you for Robert Morris? Like what those environments, uh, I would say first junior college, the environment of junior college, and then the mindset, uh, and the things you had to do as a walk on and the mind and what that taught you in that process as well, being a walk on. Uh, junior college, you know, um, it was it was a really good experience for me. Uh, my coach at the time, he was a um, he was a Christian guy, you know, really didn't cuss, you know, um, but he was very competitor. He taught us how to compete. Um, he hated to lose, you know, so um, he just instilled that into us and, and kind of instilled that into us today. You know, he just very competitor, had a real mild manner. He really didn't cuss a lot, but he just still that. Uh, competitiveness in us today. Um, as far as on the court at that time, we were in-staters, you know, so you, you got the in-state recruits and you, I think you only can have on roster six out-of-staters at the time, you know, so you had the six, you know, out-of-staters competing. Then you had the in-state, you know, recruits competing as well. Um, so you had to compete against your own in-staters and you had to compete against the out-state re recruits, you know, so it was very competitive, you know, trying to get on the court. Um, but you had a lot of, you know, it was very competitive, you know, the Jayhawk East, the Jayhawk West. You played a lot of, a lot of good players that went on to higher. 
um, that played. Um, so it was very competitive. Um, that went over to higher, you know, Division One. So mm-hmm. you, um, you see a lot of big time coaches that came to the games, the practices. So I think a lot of people don't realize how competitive that junior college it is, you know. Um, especially in this area, Pittsburgh, PA, people don't realize how competitive junior college basketball is. It's very competitive, a lot of good basketball, a lot of junior college teams can beat some of these four-year schools. In my- mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, and, and, you know, and I would agree uh, to that. And it's good to hear someone else say it because most people look at me crazy. And I tell them for us in Florida to uh, win a national championship and to be competitive in Florida was like – coaching in the ACC on the men and coaching in the SEC or ACC in the women, uh, it was, it was a real competitive atmosphere. Um, you know, I, in, in my span of the years, man, our conference won the national championship five times just out of my conference. And I was one of the five. And so it was a very, very uh, competitive and delightful thing, uh, junior college. And I think it opens the door, like you said, to a lot of, college coaches coming in, being re-recruited, sometimes going at a higher level, coming out of junior college than you would have out of high school. And um, yeah. you know, it's, uh, I really appreciate that. So let's transition into the mindset of walking onto Robert Morris as a walk-on. Um, you, you, you play at a competitive junior college and then you go to Robert Morris. What, what, was some of the, uh, what were some of the things you had to do to uh, be a walk-on, to survive? to be a contributor, your mindset, you know, what is a, what, what does that look like for uh, a listener or a kid that's listening or a, a parent that's listening to, uh, to trying to encourage a, a walk on, a kid to walk on? What, is, what, is, what was that experience for you? Um, my experience was, you know, I had to understand a Robert more, every, every experience is different, you know, um, you know, some walk-ons, you know, they get to play, you know, immediately. Some have to, they don't play at all, you know, so each experience is different. But at Robert Morris, for me, practices were my games, you know. So I, I, my job was to get the players ready to play in the games. You know, I was very rarely going to get into the games, and I understood that, you know. So I had to go in there, and I, I was expected to go hard in the drills and do everything like the scholarship players had to do and understand that I'm probably not going to get in the game. You know, this is a blowout either way, you know, but I had to prepare like I was going to play. I had to, you know, go to the film sessions and do everything like a scholarship player. But practices and being on the scout team and doing those things, those are my opportunity to play. That, those are my games, you know, to get those players ready for the game. Now, how was that? And we transition into how does that experience now prepare you to be uh, a coach? Because you, you're getting all that knowledge and you're around it and then you're going into coaching and you, you, you must have gained something from that because you won championships after championships. So what did that, what did that experience give you as far as a coach? Um, every level, I, I take something, you know, from each coach, you know, I'm a sponge, you know, mm-hmm. from every level from high school and from junior college and to, you know, being a Robert Moore's, I take something from each coach that I like and, you know, and don't like, and I apply it to my own coaching philosophy, you know, and um, I was a sponge, you know, I knew at an early age I wanted to coach, you know, so at every level, I took something from each coach and try to, you know, apply it to my own coaching philosophy, you know, so whether it was drills or how they treat certain players and, you know, just on and off the court things, you know, I, I watched and learned in how they treated players and different drills and just everything, you know, the whole aspect of coaching, you know, and how they were the, around their families and how, you know, they treated kid, their children, you know, everything, mm-hmm. you know, it's more than about the X's and O's, but the whole, how they ran their program. So let me ask you this, how, how were you successful? What did you do differently than other high school coaches in your area and why you, why were you able to be so successful um, at your institution? I think the biggest thing is just being myself. You know, I can't be anyone else. I always just stay true to myself. Um, I'm not a big yeller or screamer. Um, I only know how to coach my way. Um, you know, I just think that was the biggest thing. You know, I think you can't put me in a box. You know, you can't try to make me be someone I'm not. Um, and I just think I learned, um, 
you know, I'm a quiet person by nature, you know, so I just pick and choose. I'm, a, I'm not afraid to, you know, learn from other people, you know, pick their brains and, you know, try to put it to my own philosophy. You know, that's kind of what I did. And when I got my opportunity to be a head coach, you know, I, I ran with it, you know, and I try to, and I learned I made mistakes, you know, I, I fixed it, you know, um, sometimes failing, you know, as a good teacher, you know, when mm. you come back and um, you learn even when you have success you know you don't quit working you just keep grinding and continue to get better you know because you gotta understand people are gunning for you you know so no matter what win or losing you still got to get better you know that's kind of been my mindset now what in that and that's amazing and what was your what's your philosophy as far as uh, building the culture and your program and and how did you build that philosophy and how did those kids um, take on to that culture, like, and what are some of the things that you did to build that culture of championship and, and that mindset uh, for kids coming into your program and even getting parents to buy into what you were doing uh, into the program? I mean, first, the kids got to know you care. I mean, you got to capture their heart before you can do anything. You know, if they don't know that you care about them, um, they're not going to play hard for you. You know, they don't care about how much you know about the game until they know how much you care about them. Um, once they figure out how much you care about them, then they'll listen to you and they'd be willing to go through a wall. Um, you know, um, once I was able to build that trust with them, um, they were able to, you know, listen to me as far as on the court, you know. Um, building that trust relationship with them is important. Um, even with the parents too, you know. Um, one thing I always ask myself, especially when I got older, you know, would I want my daughter to play for me? You know, um, if the answer is yes, then I know that I'm doing something, not only me, but my assistant coaches as well. If I'm doing, if the answer is yes, then I'm doing something right. You know, if the answer is no, then I need to change something, you know, because these parents are entrusting us, whether they're good parents or bad parents, they're trusting us to do right by their children, you know. So um, that's where the parent trust comes in, the factor. But it's more so the kids, because we don't – coach the parents, we trust the kids, we got to get them to buy in. And once they trust us, then we're able to coach them a certain way. And um, then we can implement our program, whether it's, you know, the style of play we get into, but uh, more before you get into the style of play, then you can implement your, you know, your core values and what you believe in and get into that, you know, whether it's trust and loyalty and beliefs and all that. But before you get to that and sell them, not sell them, but, you know, get them to buy in, but you got to tr get them to trust you and believe in you and do those type of things first before you can even go into the X's and O's and skill development and things of that nature. Because if not, they're only going to go half speed and they're going to question everything you do. And especially today's generation, they want to know why, you know, back in the day, coach says something, you just do it. it mm -hmm. They want to know why, you know? So, when you when you have when you took over the program at your institution and you guys won the first championship, um, what was that like? And did that set the tone for everything else to follow? And for me, you know, I, I feel like when you do it the first time, then it's gonna be it's gonna be automatic, like it's almost automatic because it's 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 done. So when you won the first one what was that feeling like and what was some of the adversities you had to face to get to that first one? And then some of the challenges after the first one going into uh, the next six that you won. Um, the first one was, it was special because the team that we beat in the championship, they, I think they beat us 11 or 12 straight times in a row. You know, they were in our section and they're a very good team and they beat us like 11 straight times in a row, 11 or 12 straight times in a row. Um, so going into that championship game, I was like, what do we got to lose? You know, no one expects us to win. Just go out there and let's just play hard, have fun, you know, see what the chips made because there's no pressure on us. Nobody thinks we're going to win. Let's just go out there and just give her our best. You know, you know, we, we believe that we can win, you know, we prepared to win. We knew we can win, but the outsiders, no one else thought we can win, you know? So there's really no pressure on us. Just go out there and play, you know, and we went to the game and we won by double digits, you know, and just seeing that joy on those kids' face and just seeing how they celebrated, it was, it was fun, you know, um, and just that's something I will always remember just because of that hurdle that we had to, you know, get over, you know, because 
that team was so dominant. They just dominated us for 11 straight times in a row. You know, we'll play with that team for a half and they beat us, whether it's the first half or second half. We could never put two halves together to compete with that team. And that championship game, that first time, we were able to beat them. So that was a great accomplishment for that team. Um, and after that, um, we just started rolling. You know, we had a hiccup and I believe 2011, we got beat in the first, second round, I believe. Um, you know, we had a good regular season. And I think we won our first playoff game and we lost the second round. Um, we were to hunt it at that point, you know, mm -hmm. for us. And, you know, we just had to get used to winning, you know, being the hunted, you know, you know, not being a hunter. Um, but that, you know, we were just, we got a taste of winning. Winning felt great, you know. Um, and people always say you learn from losing, but you also, you know, learn from winning as well, you know. And our, our team did that. They, did a, they got used to winning. Um, they got addicted to winning. They saw how teams put in the hard work and uh, what they did to win. And it's kind of each class didn't want to be that class to, you know, let – down, you know, that's, that's kind of how the program went. They didn't want to be that class that didn't win a championship, you know, so each class worked hard. They didn't want to let the other, they didn't want to be that class that didn't win a championship, you know. So that's kind of how the program built and uh, past alumni will build, you know, big feed into the other kids and, you know, help those other kids out. But they didn't want to let each other down. And that's kind of how the program built to where we're at today. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. And that's an amazing story. Uh, and because I believe success um, is the blueprint to recreating more success. Like when you have success, it, it creates itself. And those, those young ladies or the young men start to believe. And then that's when they begin to become the people that they're uh, bound to be and believe in. And so I commend you for that. Now, we go back. So after several years, then you became the athletic director. Yeah. Okay. And as the athletic director, what are some of the things that you had to do um, to kind of be able to keep winning, you know, contain the stuff with your team and then run a whole other athletic uh, department with other teams? And so what are some of the things that you learned from being the athletic director uh, that helps you move forward into, you know, anything else that you're doing now? Just kind of took the same approach that I do with coaching, just kind of implemented through the whole athletic department, just um, work together as a team, you know, just realizing I can't do everything by myself. Um, it takes a whole, everyone needs to work together to accomplish a, a goal. You know, we want to try to be the best, you know, athletic department, the best school, the best team that we can possibly be. You know, it takes all of us to be successful, you know, and just realize I can't do it all by myself. You know, um, I want to be the best that we can be. At the same time, it takes all of us to be successful. Everyone needs to be accountable for what, you know, what we need to do. At the same time, I need to trust my coaches, be loyal to my coaches, mm -hmm. um, you know, give them responsibility and don't micromanage. You know, they need to do what they need to do. I need to support them. Um, and as an athletic director, my job is just let them coach, do, take care of everything else, um, all the transportation, the officials, and all the nuts and bolts of everything and just allow my coaches just to coach, you know, that's kind of what I wanted to do for them. So they don't have to worry about anything else, let them coach. And if anything issues come up, you know, I, I handle that, you know, put out the fires here and there. And if something comes up, you know, I'm going to have their back. I'm going to be loyal to them no matter what, because um, as a coach, I know how it feels when people attack and parents attack. I have that experience. I know what they're going through mm -hmm. kind of, helps me out. I know the pressures that they're going through so I can relate to them, you know, a lot better being a coach. Cause I'm in the same boat that they're in. I'm just happy to be a coach and athletic director so I can relate to what they're going through. So coach Ron, tell me, uh, with all the stuff that is going on with the pandemic, mm -hmm. where is your school and where, what has that place you guys in? Because the world's in turmoil. And so where are you guys at with that, with being a private school and everything, where, where does that, what has that done for you guys? Um, right now, our schools uh, transition to close in June. You know, so the, um, our schools plan on closing for good in June. Um, so teachers, administrators, students, we all got to find somewhere to go. 
you know. So, of course, the seniors are going to college, but the juniors on down, they got to find new schools. All the teachers and myself and the rest of the administrators, we got to find new jobs, you know. So we're all in a transition mode, you know. Um, so it's very unfortunate what's happening, um, you know, with the pandemic and what's going on with the school. Um, but I'm one of those believers that when God closes one, when one door closes, uh, no, God's going to open up another door. You know, I kind of look at it like that. And he will. And so what are you looking forward to? Um, I know it's, transition is always hard, but um, are you looking to uh, go into the administration as, and, and, and be the AD? Are you looking for a place to coach? Are you looking for a situation where you can do both? What is it? What is, what is your heart line and, and where do you kind of want to, where do you see that lane for you uh, in this transition right now? Um, I would like to do both, you know. Um, I feel like my calling and my passion is a coach. Uh, I feel like that's what I want to do, you know. And I feel like that's what I'm called to do, you know, um, to teach life lessons through basketball, you know. Sure. Um, I've been blessed to be able to win where I'm at but it's more than just winning. It's just helping life lessons, you know, cause at the end of the day, um, trophies get old, you know, medals get old, you know, the rings get old, but the seeds that you, you know, sow and you plant into these young people's lives, those last forever, you know? So I feel that's something I want to do is continue to, you know, teach life lessons through basketball. Um, same time, I would like to continue at, you know, the administration level in sports, um, and see what, what happens with that. If not, continue to use my sports management degree in an athletic field somehow. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, awesome stuff. And then where, where has coaching women, and, you know, we talk, you, you have a daughter, nine-year-old daughter, where has coaching women, I'm, it's going to be a two-fold question. Mm -hmm. Having a daughter and coaching women's sports, what did it do to you? How did it change you? And what did it do to you? And then, you know, uh, being a women's coach and having a daughter, how does that, how did that change you or how did that make you as a father? Um, it's, it's funny because, you know, out of, coming out of college, you know, out of Robert Morris, um, I never wanted to coach women or girls basketball. You know, um, I wanted to coach men's. You know, I thought the game was more exciting. It was more faster. I thought it was just a better fit for me, you know. Um, I couldn't get hired on the men's side. And I went on interviews. So, um, some people just wouldn't interview me. You know, I, people that did interview me said I didn't have enough experience. You know, um, I applied for one girl's job and I got in, got an interview, you know. And, um, you know, um, and when I got after the interview, it went well. And to this day, you know, um, Sam Salee, Coach Sam Salee and Coach Cornelius Nesbitt, um, they believed in me. They gave me an opportunity. And since that day, you know, um, I've been running with it. You know, they they saw something in me. They gave me a chance. And um, because of those two men, you know, they, I've been coaching ever since, you know. So um, because of that, you know, I felt like God placed me in a position to coach women. Mm -hmm. You know, it's something I didn't seek out. It's not something that I wanted to do. It's something I felt like God put me in a position to do. And because of that, you know, um, I think that's something, you know, looking towards that with my daughter's situation, I feel like he's put me in a position to kind of, as a male, not in, I can't really empower women, but just kind of help them to, I can help them relate. Being a minority myself, mm -hmm. you know, help them because you know sometimes as women you know how men look at them as being second you know and sometimes they look at us you know as being the black black males as being below them as well I can kind of relate to them you know so I try to empower women you know what you don't take us back seat you know this is what you have to do you demand the respect you know from people you know and and I tell them as basketball players as well um when you're on the court, you know, you, I coach you as basketball players. I don't coach you as young ladies, you know, in that respect, you know, it's kind of like my, my daughter, you know, um, there's no, it's daddy's little girl, you know, um, I try to show her love every single day. 
Um, so that way I tell her I love her every single day. So that way when some knucklehead comes around, she's used to hearing that daddy loves her. So no matter what way, she's used to hearing those type of things. And she's used to seeing a positive role model, male role model in her life, you know? So um, I just think that, you know, the way it all happened, the way it went down, you know, not being able to get male coaching and um, things of that nature and how God opened up doors to coach females and only applying to one girl's job and job and the success that we had over the years coaching female and just kind of the life lessons and the success that we had with those young ladies and just hearing some of the testimonies that some of the past females that I helped over those years, you know, it, it lets me know that we're doing the right things. Yes, sir. And I, Coach, and I will have to uh, tell you this, you are empowering young women. Uh, you know, you, you're giving them um, the gift of who you are and you're giving them the access uh, to, to the essence of who you are. And, you know, I just love the fact that you're so humble about it, but you are and have empowered them. And so, you know, I, I know you don't take that lightly, but you are empowering these uh, young women like you're empowering your daughter and, would uh, think nothing less of them being successful uh, here in the future. Coach, what is it that you would want to share with um, anybody out there with us uh, coming to a close? Anything you want to share? Because I have two last questions that I end with, but uh, mm -hmm. I want to give you an opportunity to share, um, you know, whatever you want to share uh, to our listeners about, you know, success, anything, life lesson, anything that you live by, We'd love uh, to hear it and your are your model that you you and your family live by. We'd love to uh, hear that from such a successful person. Uh, just the biggest thing with basketball is just, you know, I just use it just to teach life lessons. You know, um, everything that happens in sports, you know, you can translate it to life, you know, the ups and downs, the good times, the bad times. Um, I just think the sports is the best teacher for life. You know, you can help use – you know, these life lessons to teach, you know, sports to teach life lessons, you know, what happens on a basketball court, you can't read in the classroom, you know, education is very important, you go to school to be a, a student, that's why it's just called a student athlete, but what you learn on a basketball court or football field or any softball dime, any sport, you know, you can't read in a textbook, you got to go through those battles as a teammate, you know, um, it teaches you how to work with people. It teaches you how to deal with success and failures and different things like that, you know. So I think, you know, being a coach, um, you know, is a, one, it's a blessing, you know. Um, I think as a coach, you got to be able to adapt, you know. I think especially nowadays, um, you know, if you can't adapt to the times, you're not going to last very long in this business. Um, and also being a coach, you can learn from your players as well nowadays, you know. Um, communications change, you know, um, it's just a different game now, you know, but I think that it's a blessing to be in a coaching business. Um, it's something I have a passion for. Um, it just, you know, it's opened up so many doors for me and myself and, you know, you know, my family, you know, but the biggest thing is that, you know, even though that sometimes, you know, that, I think sometimes parents might not understand or agree uh, with everything that we do as coaches. Um, I think majority of the time that most coaches have the best interest of kids at hand because um, we spend so much time in pouring and investing into their sons or daughters' lives. And I just think that, you know, that's what it's all about. You know, it's not so much the wins or the losses. It's about the relationships that we build and the memories that we build and, um, at the end of the day, you know, it's usually one champion. At the end of the day, it's all about the life lessons and the memories that we build over the course of a season and over a lifetime. And that's what's most important to me. You know, like I said, when I'm a competitor, I want to win at everything I do. I hate losing, you know, so don't get me wrong. I, if I want to do something, I want to be the best at it. But at the end of the day, you know, it's about the, the memories and the, um, the relationships over the lifetime. Awesome, man. Awesome. Coach, if someone were to write a book about your journey, your story, what would that title be? Whew. Uh, um, I'll probably say something long, long misunderstood, maybe something like that. Um, just because I'm very quiet, 
by nature and a lot of people don't understand how can this guy be so quiet and have the success that he's had over the years. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I just misunderstood something along that. I don't know. <laughs> something along the line, maybe. Okay. Now, yeah. if they take that book, mm -hmm. misunderstood, and then they say, hey, we're going to put a Netflix show movie. Uh, we're going to make it into a Netflix. Who would play you in that net Netflix show or movie? For someone famous? An actor? Who would uh, play you? Me. Nobody can play me but me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, it gotta got to be myself. No one can play myself better than me, you know. I so. understand. I understand. Yeah. Well, awesome, awesome. Coach, thank you so much. Uh, we have Coach's social media information. It will be con uh, connected to his bio in uh, the links uh, in this podcast and on YouTube. And we look forward to you, Coach, anything we can do to add value to you. Uh, good luck to you in your search. And, and we're praying for you and all your colleagues that are searching. Um, to all the people out there that are listening to this, you're looking for an AD or a, a, a coach, we've got a good one for you here. Reach out to Coach Ron if you need one. Coach, thank you for your time. Blessings to you, brother. Um, thank you for representing uh, minority males like you're representing minority males. Um, and I'm not just talking about the winning. I'm talking about the person and how you're empowering these young women and these uh, young young student athletes and uh, those working around you. Thank you so much for your service, Coach Ron. And like I said, anything we can do for, for you, uh, let us know. This is Coach Q with Full Court Press uh, in transition with Coach Q. And we'll be back with you next time. Thank you so much. And we look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks, Coach. I appreciate it. Yes, Thanks. sir. Thank you. Yep.